The natural world is God's creation. Scripture emphasizes it frequently. He has made it according to his own wisdom, his own plan. He knows it inside and out and has planned all the laws and principles by which it operates. The biblical writers do not hesitate to ascribe the events of the natural world directly to God. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain, for so you have ordained it. You drenched its furrows and leveled its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The Lord does whatever pleases him in the heavens and on the earth, in the seas and all their depths. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth. He sends lightning with the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouses. He sends his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He spreads the snow like wool and scatters the frost like ashes. He hurls down his hail like pebbles. Who can withstand his icy blast? He sends his word and melts them. He stirs up his breezes and the waters flow. Notice the monergism in these statements. These are things that God does because they please him. He does not merely allow them to happen. Rather, he makes them happen. God waters the land. God drenches the furrows. God makes the clouds rise. God thunders, Jeremiah 10, 13. God makes it snow or rain. God sends the frost and the ice. And then, when he pleases, he melts it. As he created all things by his word, so he sends his command, his word, to govern the events of nature. Even those events that appear to be most random are under God's sovereign control. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. Proverbs 16.33 Throw dice and draw straws. God controls the result. He decides the numbers to be drawn in the lottery. Indeed, in some cases, he reveals his will through the drawing of lots. Jonah 1.7, Acts 1, 23 26 What we call accidents come from the Lord, Exodus 21.13. Scripture also teaches the sovereignty of God by showing his purposeful discrimination in natural events. Before bringing Israel out of Egypt, God brings plagues on the Egyptians. So Israel has known Yahweh as the Lord of nature. In Exodus 9, 13 through 26, he brings a terrible hailstorm upon the Egyptians, but leaves one area untouched, the land of Goshen, where the Israelites lived. God is the one who gives rain to one town and withholds it from another, Amos 4, 7. He sends prosperity and he sends famine, Genesis 41, 32. Jesus emphasizes that this divine control extends to the smallest details. He teaches us that our Heavenly Father not only makes the sun rise and sends rain, Matthew 5.45, but also feeds the birds, 6.26, clothes the lilies, 6.28-30, accounts for the falling of the sparrows and numbers the hairs on our head, 10.29-30, Luke 12, 4-7. And he demonstrates his unity with the Father by calming the sea at his own command. So the biblical view of the natural world is intensely personalistic. Natural events come from God, the personal Lord. He also employs angels and human beings to do his work in the world. But the idea that there is some impersonal mechanism called nature or natural law that governs the universe is absent from the Bible. So is the notion of an ultimate randomness, as postulated by some exponents of quantum mechanics. Now, obviously, there are such things as natural forces like gravity and electricity. Scripture indeed mentions the natural forces of the weather. But it is plain that in view of the biblical writers, any impersonal objects or forces are only secondary causes of the course of nature. Behind them, as behind the rain and the hail, behind even the apparent randomness of events, stands the personal God who controls all things by his powerful word.